So in Adobe Lightroom, Lightroom Classic and Camera Raw, over in the right column, you will find a slider labeled Clarity. Clarity is a micro contrast tool. It creates contrast within the image as opposed to just regular normal contrast, which is applied across an image. What does that mean? Well, let me illustrate it for you using a grayscale ramp. So here's a grayscale ramp with pure black at far left and pure white at far right and many shades of gray in between. If we turn up contrast, let's, uh, let's just begin there. If we turn up contrast, you will see that it is making the brights in the ramp brighter and it's making the darker tones in the ramp darker. It is pushing them further away from one another. That is essentially what, <laughs> what contrast does. Micro contrast is similar. It does a similar effect of darkening and brightening, but it does so within the image. It looks for areas of division. It looks for areas of change from one tonal value to the next. And if we turn up clarity here and take a look at it, you will see the effect that it's having. It's adding some darkening and some brightening to each band in order to emphasize uh, the differences between them. It's almost like we've taken something that, you know, was like this, flat and two dimensional and made it like this instead. Now, in addition to positive clarity, you can also add negative clarity. Negative clarity does the inverse of positive clarity. It is blending together all of these tonal values, the tonal values that used to be more distinct with a, with a sharper line between the two. So now that we know what clarity does, what can we do with it from a practical perspective? How can we use it to improve our photography? Well, let's take a look at this image here. So obviously here we have a landscape image. And if you've never been to my channel before, I primarily photograph uh, landscapes. And I remember well taking this image uh, out in Utah because I happened to drive by. Uh, this was on, this was in like the Grand Escalante area down this dirt road. And I happened to drive by this rock formation here. Uh, and the light was amazing and the sun was just, I was getting this really nice late afternoon side light and it was lighting up these rocks here. And of course, by the time I stopped and turned around and came back and got the camera out of the car, got everything into position. Well, the clouds moved in and the clouds pretty much obscured the, the sun and it wasn't the same as it was before, unfortunately. And because of that, because it was effectively cloudy and overcast, all of these tones are more or less blending together like they're all pretty similar to one another they're all kind of like sitting in the in the mid-tone region of the image there's not a lot of you know visual distinction between them so this is a really good use case for clarity so let's just add clarity to the image and see the effect that it's having doesn't need much I, i'm like at what 35 right now something like that and so now, and I'm actually going a little bit stronger because this is a, <laughs> a YouTube video to make it easier to see. Now you can see that there's more division between the darker tones and the brighter tones in these rocks. Let me just take it back down to zero. That's where we started. And now with additional clarity, we are bringing up those highlights. We're emphasizing the brighter areas of the rock. Now, the thing to remember about the clarity slider and, and what I think is one of the main gotchas of the clarity slider and the thing that I, I would imagine some people probably trip up on is the fact that clarity, this tool, the clarity tool is a global tool. So when you apply clarity, it focuses most of its most of its attention on the midtones and tries to ignore some of the darker areas and some of the brighter areas of the image. But it still has an effect. It is still an adjustment that is applied everywhere. Personally, I'd rather not have clarity up here in the sky, and I'm not particularly interested in having clarity in the foreground either. I mainly want it back here where our main subject is and where it's having the most positive effect on the image. Well, a simple fix for that is just to uh, revert clarity back to zero. And what we're going to do instead is apply a mask. Now, what I would recommend doing for this is uh, beginning with a luminance range mask. This is a mask that will mask out particular areas of the image we don't want from our selection. So I don't want the clarity to affect the darkest areas of the image because I don't necessarily need to be like revealing detail there. And I don't want it in the brightest areas either because the bright areas are typically where light is coming from. And personally, I'd rather light look natural for a light to look a little more ambient, a little, a little bit glowier, a little more atmospheric. And clarity just adds unnecessary detail there that we don't really need. So I'm going to remove that. 
And now we're just focusing on the midtones of the image. Now, of course, you can you know bring in these handles here in order to make it even more aggressive and you know feather it however you want. Now, in order to get rid of the sky, and this is one of the cool things about the masking tool in Lightroom, we can just go to remove, select sky, and now we've popped the sky out. If we also want to get rid of the foreground, I can go back to subtract, go linear gradient, and then drag up from the bottom like so, perhaps be even more aggressive with it, bring it in even further. And I think right about there looks good. And we're going to turn off the overlay and then come back in the mask settings down here. And here you will find another clarity slider, except this is a slider that is only for the mask that we just created. So now we are applying positive clarity only to the midtones, only to the midtones in this middle section of the image here in order to bring out more, um, more structure, more shape, more dimension to those rocks, and also a little extra light. I mean, you'll notice that they're also getting brighter. Sorry for the, for the mask <laughs> continually highlighting. Um, you'll notice that they're also getting brighter. So that's another uh, net effect, another net positive effect of clarity. Okay, so what about the opposite of positive clarity? What about negative clarity? What can we use negative clarity for? Well, let's take a look at this image. So this is an aerial photo captured using a DJI Air 2S drone. This is a raw DNG file. Nothing has been done to it. I haven't edited this image at all. It is straight out of drone, <laughs> straight, out of, um, straight out of camera. And the reason I'm picking a drone photo to illustrate this point about negative clarity is because oftentimes with uh, with cameras like, you know, the kind that are in drones and, and for that matter, you know, in like, you know, action cameras like a GoPro. Oftentimes what these companies will do in their software is add clarity and sharpening to the raw file. Why they do it, I don't know. I wish they wouldn't. I wish they would just leave it alone and just, you know, just give me the straight up raw file from the image sensor. But they always go in and, you know, add a little bit of contrast, add some clarity and sharpening, I guess, to like make the image appear more presentable. So if we zoom in here and take a look, and by the way, I apologize if you can't see what I'm seeing on YouTube, I assume you probably won't be able to, but I can tell you, uh, you know, from looking at this on, on my display here that there is definitely some sharpening and some clarity that has been applied to this image because everything like the lines look rather jagged and pixelated. And you can see that there are some like white halos on the side of some of these lines here. I just don't in general care for how the image looks. I mean, it just has a very, digital look to it. All of the tones just feel very sharp, very precise, very jagged uh, in relationship to one another. And so this is a perfect opportunity to make the image a little bit smoother, like make things look a little more natural and not quite so rigid uh, and, and crispy and stiff as you oftentimes get with, with drone images. So if we come back over here to the clarity slider, I'm now going to drop this down and let's just drop it down. I'm going to go a little bit further than normal just to, you know, show you. So you're able to see it uh, better on YouTube. So that's minus 25 there. And now if we toggle this on and off, that is the uh, straight out of camera image there. And now that is with negative clarity applied. That's before that's after it appears to be also be getting rid of some of the color noise in the image. Notice how, some of these grays are now turning a softer blue because the tones are now being pushed uh, closer together, which is a really interesting change. It's almost like it's also improving the, uh, the, uh, the color harmony in the image and the relationship between the blues and the oranges uh, just all on its own, just by dropping some of, that, some of that clarity and getting rid of it from the image. Now, in reality, I wouldn't push it quite this far. I would go down to like, say like minus 10, minus 15, somewhere in there. I generally, you know, whenever I apply negative clarity, it's usually between like minus five, minus 15. I don't really go higher than that because then things start to get kind of glowy and bloomy like that. And that just, yeah, that looks pretty awful. So just a little bit goes a long way. And by the way, negative clarity isn't simply helpful with uh, drone images or action camera images. You can use it with raw files from any camera. As a matter of fact, I probably use negative clarity more often than positive clarity because with my photography, with you know, which is primarily, primarily landscape, I like for my images to look a little bit 
a little more analog, a little more natural, a little more organic and not not be so like digital looking. Like I want to take some of that edge off of the image. And this is part of the reason why, you know, people are buying vintage lenses on eBay, why people are buying diffusion filters and they're trying to find ways to knock back some of that some of that digital clarity that the camera just creates all, all on its own because the cameras and the lenses we have today are so precise and are so accurate, which might be great for like, you know, product photography or portraits or things or architectural photography, what have you. But for me and my own like creative taste, I mean, I prefer things to look a little bit softer and a little more organic and not quite so digital. So negative clarity, uh, just a little bit, doesn't take much, like between like negative five, negative 10, somewhere in there, really does take a little bit of that edge off. And then you can always sharpen some details later if you want to. So if you've never given negative clarity a try with your images, I would certainly um, give it a go and see how you like it, see how it works and see if it creates an effect uh, that you like. And when it comes to positive clarity, positive clarity, I think, is best applied uh, mainly to the midtones and to the darker areas of the image. You probably don't want to just apply it everywhere in the image. Midtones are like a really good target for positive clarity, and it can also be used to further emphasize your subject as well. Like if there's a particular area where you want to draw the user's eye and you want to pull them towards there and kind of minimize some of the other areas a little bit more. Just add uh, like a local adjustment, add a little bit of positive clarity to it. Doesn't have to be much, just keep it subtle. And that will further define and further, you know, kind of like help catch the eye a little bit more where you want the user's eye to go. Hope this video was helpful. Thanks so much for being here. I will see you next time.